Hi everyone, Dr. Nicole LaPera, the holistic psychologist here. So today's video is really important to me because in a lot of ways, the topic of being ashamed or of carrying shame really is foundational in a lot of ways to what holistic psychology means to me. So what do I mean when I say that? For a very long time, you know, as a human, I felt very stuck in a lot of areas of my life. And by that time in my professional life, I also happened to have a practice where I was in the business as a clinical psychologist of helping people create change in their life, manage symptoms that they were having, essentially feel better. And years into this practice, what I began to realize is that all of us, myself included, were suffering from some version of a universal stuckness. I've had very amazingly insightful moments with myself, moments with clients where we come to all of these realizations. We know what doesn't work. We know what may work, yet we can't actualize change. And the reason why I brought up shame and why I'm talking about things not to be ashamed of today is I know a lot of us carry a lot of shame when we see ourselves being stuck in these ways. And there's quite a universal reason why that again, like I said, was really impactful of me looking at, well, wait a minute, if I'm in the business of helping people change and I can't help myself change and not really helping my clients change very well, what is going on here? You know, are we missing something? Because a lot of us are feeling really broken and shameful at our inability to do things differently. This is a helpful reminder video um, that I think I wish on some level I might have had at the beginning of my journey. So I want to remind all of you here today, wherever you are on your journey, whether you're just getting started into the, this kind of work of healing or whether you're, you're, you're in it and you've been in it. Things not to be ashamed of are repeating old patterns. Like I said earlier, there's a reason why we're stuck and that reason lives in the subconscious part of our mind. It is essentially, using the computer analogy that we all love to hate, where all of those programs live that take us through our day, that autopilot. And the pull, we actually have an evolutionary pull to keep us in the, living those familiar patterns. Because for our species sake, when we know what comes next, we feel safer. But none of this is logical. Because a lot of you might be thinking, yes, well, I know what comes next when I live this pattern, not something positive per se, or something I'd like to avoid. So this doesn't sound logical. In the language of our subconscious and in the language of evolution, that which is predictable is safer than that which is not. So a lot of us repeat old patterns until we become conscious to the fact that we're living in autopilot. And then furthermore, until we begin to make choices to shift us out of autopilot. And that's a process. And I'm well into my healing journey now. There's still times where my old patterns are right beneath the surface, where I almost very realistically see the kind of shift in, you know, the, the split in the road where, oh, there's my old reaction, you know, the thing I always used to do in this moment right there at the ready for me. So that pattern for me is still right there in some areas with the goal being me make the new choice over time and cultivating, taking that new path. Don't be ashamed if you're someone who still sees your old patterns alive and well, maybe you're living them day in, day out. I want you to understand that that's coming from that pull of the subconscious. It prefers to keep you in that familiar, which is why none of us could change because we were battling this part of our mind that we weren't even aware of being online, being as powerful as it is. And we're trying to shift and change that without the right tools. So those of us repeating all patterns, nothing to be ashamed of. It's what you're going to do until you create consciousness and make new choices to do otherwise. Expanding on that, falling off routine. As you begin to set new routines and keep new promises, that pull is gonna be there. There's still days, it took me a very long time in the beginning of my journey to create a new routine. There'd be a day I'd do it here and there and then I'd fall off for three days and then I'd come back to do it. Those of you falling off routine, I would offer you the suggestion to not beat yourself up, not criticize yourself. Again, understand that your subconscious wants you to fall off routine, wants you to go back to the familiar it understood and was comfortable with. So it's going to be there kind of asking you. So knowing that falling off is part of the journey and also falling off gives you the opportunity to remind yourself that you have a new choice the next moment. So there's value in falling off because for me now, there's still days where I choose 
this morning being one of them. I did not do my full morning routine because I have a book hanging over my head and what my subconscious does, I go into do list and I picked working on the book as opposed to my routine. What's different now, I don't fear that I won't return. Meaning I know likely tomorrow morning, I'll go right back to keeping those morning routine promises that I know help serve me. So falling off the routine and making the choice to get back on the routine actually has some inherent wisdom in there for us. Because over time, very sneakily, I can't even tell you when it happened, there wasn't a moment I developed that internal confidence. Now I don't worry. I know that there might be moments where I don't choose my newer choices toward change, where I choose those old patterns, I repeat them, I fall off my new routine. Now I trust myself to get back. So again, that comes over time. Don't be ashamed if you're falling off your routine. Again, it's, it's part of the story of change. Also, not to be ashamed about having emotional reactivity, having those big emotions around something that might be objectively much smaller in the present moment. Those emotional reactions, again, are coming from that subconscious part of our mind, where all of our wounds, those core things that maybe really hurt us in childhood are living. And that's the filter that's coloring what's happening now which is why there's that mismatch, which is why the feeling feels so big. Because yeah, I might be reacting to the dirty dishes in the sink. This is a common example I always use. So the stimulus, right, was I'm now screaming over dirty dishes. But what I realized it wasn't the dishes for me. The reason why my reaction was so big emotionally was because for me, I had assigned all of this age old meaning about the dishes, about me not being considered coming from a very deeply wounded place in my childhood. So the emotion that I was having in that moment, maybe to my partner, who a lot of times people outside of us are very confused because we are having an actual real legitimate emotional experience, though again, it's colored by our past and not necessarily objective to what's happening in the moment. A lot of times these two go hand in hand. So not to be ashamed about if you still have those moments of emotional reactivity, I know I do. Also if it, if it comes out and you're acting out in relationships, if you see yourself engaging in those old condition patterns of withdrawal or of explosion or showing up as the helper, the caretaker, when you're trying to shift the way you show up in relationships, right? That acting out, those old patterns are right below the surface, waiting in that subconscious, and they're going to be there. They're going to try to live on even as you're trying to change. So definitely don't be ashamed of those moments. There's still moments where I take that older path in my relationships and then after the fact, I extend the apology, acknowledge you know, that I reacted in a way that was, that was not the way I wanted to show up. Another thing not to be ashamed of, especially because boundary work comes in a lot of our healing journeys, especially for those of us who struggle having boundaries. As a reminder, what are boundaries? Limits, separations between where I end and where someone else begins. So a lot of us need to begin to implement those limits, those separations as we heal. If you have trouble, I know I did. I didn't even like the idea of boundaries. It, it brought up a panic of what would everyone think of me? Because for so long, I was so worried about taking care of everyone else that the minute I was introduced to this concept of limits and of caring for myself, my subconscious went up. My old patterns came. I wanted to fall off the routine of taking care for myself and go back to being that codependent people pleaser. So for those of us who have boundary creation or implementation as part of our healing journey, know that it will be difficult. Creating those separations are hard. Those limits, learning how to be new in a relationship and show up differently will challenge that subconscious. To sum it up, the theme here, it's, it's not shameful. The reason why I talk about a holistic human, the mind, body, soul, and how all of these pieces are interconnected and oftentimes dysregulate it, and oftentimes being the space from which we're living our current choices, it's so that we have this level of understanding, so that we can over time relieve any shame that we're carrying that's an indicator of our brokenness, our, our inability to change, our genetic predisposition to be this way, right? Know that all of this are signs and signals that we're caught up in our conditioning. And I'm here to tell you that we're more than our conditioning. We are so much more than our conditioning. It's incredibly hard to create change. These are kind of the pulls that bring us back. And it's nothing to be shameful for. 
I hope you found this video helpful. I know for me, really understanding, so that's the second piece of this. You can listen to this video, you can get it, but when you embody the understanding, the next time you see yourself repeating that old pattern, you give yourself grace, right? The next time you see yourself having that or witness yourself in that emotional reactivity and extend compassion for that wound that's there and very real for you. Each and every time you can harness the very natural things that happen when we try to change and expand again in grace and compassion and flexibility, usually for yourself, the more we can embody these teachings.